he could see gold make a solid move to the upside, which would be a welcome relief from last month's report that took it down $80. Now, so it, it is time to look at gold in a thinner volume with real potential, real potential. Well, realize that we'll, look, we'll definitely look at the technical patterns, but we have to acknowledge in the type of a marketplace that we have now, uh, sometimes if a Federal Reserve official sneezes, it can change market sentiment. In other words, it's statements reading between the line, Fed speak, so to, so to say, that is so critically important. So where the technicals can play a really significant role is to guide us to different levels in which if we see a pivot in terms of things that have been said or reports that come out, we have an idea of where gold could fall to, where it could rise to, and where it could pivot at. And you mentioned the jobs report, and I think that will be one of the most significant reports out possibly this month because we've had a slew of inflation reports, last week's PCE, the CPI, and when we compare it to first quarter performance where inflation was running very hot, we finally have signs that inflation is cooling. We got that on the last two readings, specifically the PCE, which is the Fed's preferred gauge uh, to look at inflation. And so when we consider the jobs report, May came in, uh, what was it, 272,000 new jobs, well above expectations. It moved gold $80 lower in a single day. It was significant. And the early forecasts for Friday's report is that the, it will come in a lot softer at 190,000 new jobs added. And that's one of the things that Powell addressed. He said that they are seeing signs that the economy is slowing, that inflation is cooling, and the labor market is contracting. And he said a couple of things. The first thing is he said he wouldn't be surprised or expects to see unemployment tick up. It came in at 4%, which was higher than previous readings. But the fact that the number of new jobs added, if that report bears fruit, in other words, they're spot on as they were with the PCE, that would be significant because the Federal Reserve says that they need to see more evidence and what they're seeing is solid right now. They just need more of it. That would be the more of it, so to speak. So Friday's job report could be significant if it comes in at 190 or below. We could see gold make a solid move to the upside, which would be a welcome relief from last month's report that took it down $80. Now, as it pertains to gold, we have recognized a pattern, and the first chart that we're going to look at is going to show that, that we've seen that pattern appear before, and that is this pattern that occurs really between uh, November, December, all the way up to about uh, the end of February, and it's a descending top, meaning you get a series of lower highs, but you get a flat bottom, in other words, equal lows. And this particular pattern, as you'll see on our next chart, can indicate a breakout to the upside or downside, but it depends where the trend was previous uh, to the formation of this pattern. So in the case of this one instance, we had a strong uptrend. We had gold coming from about 1900 in October, uh, hitting this first high at 2100, correcting and then moving to about 2200 and then having these series of lower highs equal lows and once it broke out we had a basically a parabolic move up and i think we covered this on one of our shows and that was this bull flag and the bull flag is another type of consolidation pattern and it's a bull flag because it's coming from an uptrend and again it's a continuation which brings us to our current take on gold which is this. This is the stuff we talked about before. And then, of course, we had a series of two all-time record highs, the first one on the 19th of April and the most recent one on the 20th of May, taking gold. This is futures, of course. This isn't spot. And so once again, we've got that descending top, a series of lower highs and a flat bottom. 
couple of things we can make out of this. One, we have had significant support on a technical basis at 2300. If you look uh, beginning of May, it's the low. If we look at uh, 10th of June, the low. If we look at recent activities, uh, the end of June, it's the low. And it's been moving back and forth, kind of like this sample pattern here. Now, if this chart is going to be a have any kind of solid predictive quality, we take a look at this first move up. We measure the length or the amount the gold moved from this low of 23 to about 2450. And we can say that we're probably going to see it move back above this, possibly to 2500. Now, if that happens, it would not happen at once. It would be a series of stair steps, obviously. And so, and I think that if we get, and this is why I started looking at this chart with the caveat of, Fed speak is so important and reports data is so important because if the jobs report comes in showing a contraction of jobs compared to last month and coming in at or under estimates because estimates are important because they factor that into the market. In other words, if they're predicting 190 and it comes in at 200, which isn't that much above, you can get a strong reaction because it came in above estimates. But nonetheless, that could take gold higher, and if it breaks and closes above, call it 2348, we could see a significant move of over $100 to the upside. And that's what the charts are telling us today. If it shows stronger important numbers, we've got, as I said, major support at approximately 2300. A break below that would be significant. Because when we look at the area right in here, realize this is all historical pricing that has never occurred before. And so it's very, very thin through here. And the next strong level of support doesn't occur for $100 below that $2,200. So we could see a pretty sizable dip. Realize that the last jobs report that came in well above numbers, as you suggested it, and this was a lot above numbers, saw resulted in gold dropping $80 on a single Friday. So, and that was, um, if I'm correct, this candle here, because it's the largest one within the recent time period. And that's what an $80 drop looks like in gold on a single day on a candlestick chart. So if that were to occur, um, you would see weakness in gold rather than strength, most likely.